What's up, guys? Welcome back. Just 30 days away from WrestleMania, and we've got you covered on all the latest news and stories in the pro wrestling world, starting with the founder and the former chairman of World Wrestling Entertainment, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. We have some major clarity on just how much WWE TKO Endeavor is removing themselves from all things VKM. At a conference in San Francisco hosted by Morgan Stanley, TKO President Mark Shapiro said the following about Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and I quote, We did not participate in the recent sale on Vince McMahon's load that he dropped off. This is now his second time. He's gone from 28 million shares to 15 million shares. He now has roughly 8.5%. We're not in conversation with him. We don't talk to him. We don't know his motive. We don't know his plan. We don't know his timeline. He doesn't consult with us. We don't with him. He doesn't work for the company. He doesn't work at the company. He does not come into the offices. He's not coming back to the company. End quote. That is the most definitive, most detailed, most amplified response we've ever gotten from anybody in TKO slash Endeavor when asked about VKM. That response gives a lot of insight. As to how this company is dealing with the Vince McMahon situation going on, they're no longer just waiting for Vince to remove himself because slowly he's doing it, but nobody can really tell for sure if he's going to completely sell out and ride off into the sunset, let Endeavor do what they have to do. So in the meantime, in the process, they are removing themselves from Vince McMahon. And I quote, he doesn't work with the company. He doesn't work at the company. He's never coming back to the company. That is a quote from the TKO president. He is never coming back. <laughs> so no matter what happens with VKM, Endeavor TKO is telling you his days with the company are done. Now it's just about if and when Vince completely sells out, he still has that 8.5%. He still has the, uh, the the voting share power. He has a lot of power with the percentage he has because as long as he has that and he has a couple, two, three other individuals that are close to him that have any type of power and equity and stake in the game, they can still greatly decide outcomes with this company. So Vince McMahon, as long as he's still on board with any type of of stake in this company, Vince McMahon still has power. He can still control outcomes and be a decisive factor in how business is conducted in the company. So that's why this matters. So that's why when Mark Shapiro says we, we don't know his motive, we don't know his plan, and we don't know his timeline, we, he doesn't consult with us. I mean, he told you right there, like Vince isn't even trying to reach out to them. Vince is not telling them anything. Vince has gone rogue. Vince and his legal team and his financial gurus, they're, they're up to something. Vince is always, you got to remember something about Vince McMahon. This is how he's been able to um, just avoid any issues and problems over his 70 plus years. It's Vince McMahon is always miles ahead of everybody else. So Vince McMahon absolutely has plans set in place. Every move is strategic. And TKO Endeavor is basically saying, we don't know and we no longer care. We're removing ourselves. And whatever Vince does, we will counter it. But we're not going to do it together. That's the best way to put it, I guess. I mean, Mark Shapiro cannot put it any more bluntly. We're done with him. And he doesn't consult with us either anymore. So he's done with us. We're done with him. We've moved on. We want nothing to do with this dude. He's never coming back. It's just wild, right? When you think about it, if you're a fan who've, who's been watching this product, this company for decades, you know, you only associate WWF, WWE with the McMahons, especially Vincent Kennedy McMahon. So to think like here we are on a day where the president of the company is saying he's never coming back. <laughs> like this was the dude that founded WWE. And they're just talking about him like he's just a ragdoll employee. It's amazing how far 
Vince McMahon has fallen. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Anyway, guys, important, important to keep track on this because, again, Vince McMahon, as long as he has any skin in the game, he can greatly still decide what happens in TKO. And if you have a vindictive Vince McMahon, you have a Vince McMahon hell-bent on ruffling feathers in TKO. Moving on, Meltzy. This is a... This is always fun. It's always fun to cover a Meltzy report, right? Mr. David Meltzer Esquire. Meltzy is reporting that this is the first WWE Hall of Fame being entirely ran by Paul Triple H Levesque terrorizing McMahon. Well, you don't say, Dave. (laughs) Really? Thank goodness Meltzer is on the report, man. Because we would have never have realized that Paul Levesque McMahon is running the Hall of Fame. It is pretty obvious. You have... You have four weeks to go before the big event. And just now, we're starting to hear names. And Paul Levesque McMahon is plucking Paul Heyman, who is on his current roster, by the way. The headliner is Paul Heyman. Love Paul. Can't wait for his speech. It's Philadelphia. It fits. I get it. But he's still on the active roster, just like they did with Rey Mysterio last year. You're just plucking people who are already still on your roster and have already went on record and said they're not taking off anytime soon. So there's no reason to really put these guys in the Hall of Fame prematurely. They're still very much active. But Paul Levesque McMahon waited last second. Again, four weeks before the event, the people showing up would probably want to know who they're going to see. But four weeks before the show, he he plucks Paul Heyman from his own locker room. And then, a day later, he pulls out Bull Nakano out of thin air. Bull Nakano's name. Much respect to Bull Nakano. We talked about it in yesterday's upload. Uh, I vividly remember her short stint in WWF around 1995 and the big Alundra Blaze uh, feud that she had. That's really pretty much all she did as of note with the WWF. Of course, she's very decorated, not just even in Japan, a very decorated career, but it's just so oddly placed. Bull Nakano out of nowhere gets gets the nod just weeks before the Hall of Fame. And that's it. As it stands now, as we get closer to three weeks before the big event, um, Paul Heyman and Bull Nakano and Dave Meltzer Esquire is uh, informing us that this is an entirely produced Hall of Fame ran by by Triple H, Paul Levesque McMahon. Again, of course it is. If it's chaotic, if it just doesn't make sense, if you have so many confusing questions, it's probably Paul. And also, Haku is a name that could be going into this year's Hall of Fame class as well. This makes sense. Of course, Tama Tonga is in talks with WWE for an imminent debut. That's the son of Haku. So again, it makes Total sense. It would be so good to hear his name announced and to see him take his rightful place in that Hall of Fame. Haku, it didn't matter if he was known as just a mid-carder or if he was jobbing out left and right. This dude always came across as a real-life badass because he was. His wrestling career stands and speaks for itself. Of course, that seven-year period in WWF from 85 to 92 and another seven-year stint in WCW 94 to 01. But it's the stories you hear outside the ring from the roster, from the talent, from the boys. Those legendary bar fights and just how tough, how badass Haku truly not just was, but still is today at roughly, what, 65 years of age, bare minimum? Mid-60s, I believe, and he can still probably go into any bar and rock it out. But Haku is a name we are hearing, so we'll keep an eye out for that as well. We'll end this upload with... Okada. Okada has officially debuted with AEW on this week's Dynamite. The Young Bucks announced that Okada is the newest member of the roster, and it looks like Ed Kingston will be his first big program. So I don't know, but when I'm bringing Okada into the company as much as I, man, I love Eddie Kingston. But I don't know if that's going to be the first program to sell everybody else on. Sure, it's going to be fun. It's Ed Kingston and it's Okada. I mean, come on, man. They're going to create some magic. But interesting choice. Interesting. 
But Okada, anyway, guys, has landed officially in AEW. I knew once they were talking the WWE talks, something didn't seem right. Because on the WWE side, they were starting to say, wait a second, we ain't having these talks. (laughs) Or at least not as vivid as a lot of these so-called reporters are claiming. So that led BC to believe that I think this is a lot of propaganda. Get people thinking, oh, he's about to sign with WWE, and then all of a sudden AEW gets him. You know, they've done this in the past. So uh, once again, same thing happened with Okada. All right, guys. Stick with the channel, obviously, as we are 30 days away from WrestleMania. BC is going to have you up to date with all the news, the stories, top headlines, everything. So make sure you do all the things down below. Smash the like, the notification bell, all the good things down below. And you guys will be up to date. Top guys, we're out. BC in the unit saying check you.